This is the best alternate history mod for EU4. Antebellum is the type of mod that comes once in the lifetime of a game. And I may be biased because Parmi, the lead dev of the mod, is a close friend of mine, but I do stand by what I said. The flavor and depth included for the events and mission trees of almost every single tag added in this mod go well above and beyond vanilla EU4 and its expansion DLC. The lore alone could be a book, and I encourage you to check out the Steam page as well as the Discord if you are interested in learning more. They're both linked in the description of the video. If you love Antebellum and you want to see more content like this, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Ah, Antebellum. What a beautiful, wild, weird mod. Tons of stuff from over in China and Japan are going to look different, as well as Europe, of course. All the way down through the Balkans into Anatolia, Iran, all these areas over here, down into Egypt, where we have the Nizarids. Shoot, man, this mod even adds a couple of New World tags over here. But don't worry, we deleted the rest of the uh, vanilla ones because, you know, they're annoying and they make the game run slower. But obviously, with all these new tags, and many of them have unique mission trees, we are going to see some weird stuff, and you know how we check that, right? We speed five, and we unpause. One of the many interesting things about this mod is the religious map mode. You can see there are Norse in this Suo Minusco up here in the lands of the north, as well as Romuva and Slavic in their historical regions. But uh, yeah, we cannot forget about the Magyars and their uh, Tengri faith. Over in the east, we have Nestorian, which is uh, considered the, the Eastern Christian faith. And I have no idea what this one is, this uh, Maitreya, but uh, this one is also over here in China, and this is not vanilla either. We've got a Zoroastrian Persia down here, a Sunni Seljuk Empire, a very strong Bulgaria who uh, just like full annexed Serbia. So that's a thing, I guess. And the Purple Phoenix is stronger in this timeline as well, which I like to see. Sicily in the south of Italy is actually Shia, and it uh, looks like they are actually crusading for Rome right now as we speak. England is not English per se, they are an Anglo-Saxon England rather than a Norman England, so you can see there's going to be a bit of interesting stuff with this. These guys were actually the subject of the most recent update. And of course, the uh, Reconquista failed, and Andalusia controls most of Iberia. In general, a lot of the world is just a lot more balkanized than it is in vanilla. There's a ton of little small tags. Where the big tags are, there's generally events or disasters that will cause them to break up. So there's quite a bit of interesting things that you can expect, and a lot of it is very dynamic. Heck, we've even got a Comania here. And about... 40 years in, looks like Andalusia is having a pretty good game, as is their Muslim brothers over here in uh, Sicily. It seems that we have a Sarigrad here, meaning Byzantium has fallen, and uh, it is all Bulgaria. Bulgaria touching tips with a pretty beefy Seljuks, who also touch tips with a pretty beefy Nizarids. So uh, safe to say there's going to be some action over in this area. Also, take a look at this beautiful Theodoro. My goodness. Beautiful color, beautiful nation. The Slavic pagans over here of uh, Valetti are doing quite well, uniting most of their area. They actually have a formable tag called Wendia, and I made a video on it, so feel free to check out my uh, YouTube channel for that if you were interested. Estonia absolutely popping off over here, and somehow Denmark stole some land from Sweden after losing land to England. It appears that Francia has gained some land and lost some land, lost some land to Gascony, gained some land from uh, Brittany. And how about that Styria over here looking extremely good? Yuan has consolidated quite a bit of the land in China, and there's multiple paths that they can take, and it appears that they went the Nestorian route this time. A Christian emperor of China. Pretty cool. Though, uh, yeah, they're quite devastated, so it doesn't look like mandate growth is a thing. But uh, yeah, if they can go through and pass all these reforms, of which there are many more, they can actually become the Celestial Empire, which anybody who has seen my main channel would have seen my Seljuk campaign that I did where we fought Yuan, who had formed the Celestial Empire, and they kicked our teeth in. So super, super strong tag. The Nizards are working their way all the way down into Ethiopia, splitting them into multiple exclaves and pushing their land into Fazan, bordering Tunis now. And sadly, it appears that Suomenusko as well as Romuva are both getting uh, kind of kicked out of the area. And about 100 years in, there is definitely some changes to be seen. Nations like England are crumbling, while nations like Gascony, Sicily, Bulgaria, the Seljuks, all thriving. You can even see Ulm's name from space. Beautiful. Shout out Nietzsche, shout out my Slovak boys, love ya. But 100 years in, we've got Andalusia beating out the Nizrids for the number one spot with the Seljuks just behind them. Followed by Sicily, Lotharingia, Gascony, Styria, and Bamanis. We have a Newfoundland, which is the Anglo-Saxon Canada. Right next to them, a little Lotharingia province getting colonized, so maybe we're gonna see quite an interesting colonial game. This Jazirat al Tenen is Al-Andalus, but we've also got a couple of other people colonizing down here as well. We have Holland in the house under St. Martin, 
right next to Norway. This is awesome. And speaking of Norway, how about that? Norway, Denmark, and even Gotland took a bite out of Sweden. How about this big old conflict? Sicily, Tunis, and the Seljuks with Kazan fighting against a massive Nisrids and Timmy. Over in East Asia, we've got a United Manchu, a United Japan, and Yuan with a minus two mandate growth per month. They're devastated, they're destroyed, they are going to pass zero reforms. But as you saw in the Great Power List, Balmanis is having a pretty good game, uniting most of Southern India and Central India. Though VJ is still a little thorn in their side by the looks of it. Little Malacca over here is working their way into the islands. And Kilwa has united a lot of this area, but it looks like they're having some issues with rebels. Couple of rebels over here in the Congo, but for the most part, united. West Africa is still a mess, but we do have a really cool tag on the loose. Just take a look at this beautiful hot pink for Kabu. I love it. One of my favorite tags in the game. And on the religious front, Protestantism has spawned and it is ravaging Germany. Anglican is also up in England, but England is getting ravaged by everyone else. Lotharingia has crossed the channel and has conquered much of Southern Britain. And the Danes, who start over here in Hull, have expanded all the way into Northumberland. And despite the odds and what we may have wished for, France indeed has spawned. I believe it spawns when Francia loses the Carolingians from their dynasty, so we've got France in this timeline too. We just can't escape them. And as if this couldn't get any more weird, we have France, but it's a different France. This is the France of Gascony. Gascony ate France and then reformed France. Also, what do you guys think about this kind of gray Britain? Lotharingia Britain, I, I don't know. I don't hate it. I think it's all right. We've got some pretender rebels over here on uh, the one province of England that is owned by England, but uh, their capital is not here. Their capital is actually in uh, the Atlantic Ocean in the middle of nowhere. They also lost their colonial endeavors up here to France, Lotharingia, and uh, Denmark by the looks of it. And meanwhile, Andalusia is just continuing to crush out the colonial game in Mexico as well as Louisiana. They've basically finished the Caribbean. Yeah, no surprise on that one. But we do have a Norwegian Cuba, which is pretty cool. We've got New England down here in Brazil. And Andalusia has also colonized the Cape of South Africa. If you guys had to guess how this province is pronounced, how would you say it? Because I knew an Afrikaner when I was in grad school, and she said it's pronounced something like crazy. Like you make a throat, it sounds like Khalsa. Oh, oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Look it up. Bamanis just continues to bully India, absolutely dominating. And considering how unstable Yuan is, they've been remarkably stable. It appears that the rivalry between Bulgaria and Seljuks has a winner, and it is definitely the Seljuks. Absolutely just smashing them, splitting them with Sicily. Meanwhile, the Nizards getting absolutely bonked by Andalusia and Tunis occupied most of their development. They're not doing too well. And I just realized this, this is Bulgaria, their capital in Kiev. They've migrated, very good. And of course I didn't mention this, we have a Wendia that's formed by the AI, very cool. Wendia had a mini update and they received a giant brand new mission tree, which is absolutely gorgeous. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a campaign in Antebellum. And speaking of strange tags and weird places, how about a Norse Denmark over here in Lithuania? Meanwhile, the Anglicans have mostly been kicked out of England. And to be honest with you, the Catholics are mostly kicked out of Germany and France and Italy for that matter. It's almost 1600. Absolutism is right around the corner. Andalusia is still in first place with Lotharingia behind them now, followed by Sicily and the Seljuks, but the Seljuks will actually take the number one spot once they embrace institution. Nizrids are in fifth place, but they're probably gonna fall with Balmanis climbing up to sixth from eighth with Wendia and now France formed by Gascony with only 400 development in eighth place. I think it's safe to say that most of the development in the world is uh, being consolidated under just a few tags. Funnily enough, we've got a purple Russia this time around. It's Kazan. It's all Kazan. All of Russia, well, at least the northern parts of Russia, all the way out into the steppes in Kazakhstan. Absolutely beautiful. And with a little over 100 years left, Andalusia is still up in that number one spot, but the Seljuks are not far behind at all with Sicily, Lotharingia, Dekan now formed by Bamanis, Wendia, now Kazan, and Ayutthaya in the number eight spot with a little under 900 development. The borders of Dekan haven't changed a whole lot, a little bit here and there, but uh, looking good. Absolutely aesthetic as far as I'm concerned, except for that little spot of Delhi up in the north. No surprise that Yuan fell out of the great power spot. They are getting gobbled up by Kazan of all people. But how about those Seljuks, Sicily, Andalusia, as well as Lotharingia? absolutely massive. Wendia is now Wendia, but it looks like they've lost a little bit of land here and there to Lotharingia, but they also control a lot of land in Scandinavia. Very cool. Funnily enough, this timeline, Riga is a one province miner in Riga. 
Lombardy is hidden over here with Baden and Frankfurt over here between Lotharingia, Wendia, and Sicily. Probably not going to make it much longer, to be honest. And sadly, our boys of Ulm have been reduced to one province minor over here in Donaworth, right next door to their homeland. Also, what is up with these sprites? Why are these guys not wearing shirts? Why does this guy have like a Cossack's hat? I don't know, but I kind of like it. The new world has been split between Lotharingia as well as Al-Andalus. Lotharingia, Canada up here with Vinland down here with an independent republic of American Vinland. Very cool. We have America. Al Nahua, California. I love that. I love the localization on these names. As well as Columbia, as well as Jabar, Al Andes. Lotharingian La Plata is down here in the south. And hilariously, France is a one province minor in Argentina. New England over here is actually independent because, uh, yeah, little one province minor over here in England was not going to hold them as a loyal subject for long. Interesting factoid about St. Helena. This is actually the island that uh, Napoleon was exiled to and actually where he ended up dying. The more you know. I was going to let it run all the way to 1821, but boy, I got to share some interesting stuff with you guys. Andalusia is currently getting its snot kicked out of it by Lotharingia, as well as its ally in the Seljuks. And take a look at this beautiful nation that exists over here. We have an independent Isle of Man. Apparently, they are the Empire of Man, uh, but I didn't do that. What I did do, however, is design this mission tree. I made this mission tree, all of it. And uh, as you can see here, there's some interesting, fun stuff that uh, you can do with man in antebellum. One of my more proud things that I've done in my tenure as a like semi-modder content creator guy. So. If you are interested in a fun challenge, you can actually go Norse as man in Antebellum. And the Mad Lads did it again. Another Hindustan formed, this time in Antebellum. No freaking way. No wonder man is an empire. They are the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Looks like the Protestants won this time around and the electors of Revolutionary Holstein, Tecklenburg, and man themselves have elected man to be the emperor absolutely based. So there's a few major things that you're going to notice really quickly. One, the date is after 1821 because yeah, Antebellum goes to 1900. We are going to stop it right now because I forgot that it doesn't go to 1821. Andalusia did not have a solid finisher. Colombia, the Caribbean, and Mexico all broke free and uh, the rest of their colonies were taken by other colonies like uh, America was colonized by Nouvelle Fonda or however that is pronounced. And Andalusia is an absolute shell of the absolute behemoth that it once was. Lotharingia had a very solid game, as did Revolutionary Sicily. And uh, you'll see off to the right side here, the Seljuks absolutely dominated and came away very much the number one, at least as far as I'm concerned. Hindustan finished extremely strong, finishing up most of Southeast Asia and a decent chunk of Malaysia. And my boy, the Nestorian Yuan, actually made a comeback and didn't collapse. I'm very impressed. Also, Japanese Manchuria, not sure how I feel about that one. Western Africa was an absolute mess. A bit of colonization here, a bit of revolutionary Jolof over here. Breton Kalahari down here in Southern Africa with uh, Central Africa, a bit of a mess to be honest. Another Chubert vid, another time where we see Zulu popping out, very cool. And Kilwa had an absolutely banger of a game. The Nizrids do still exist, though, uh, yeah, not really in much any major capacity. And poor, definitely not Russia, Kazan is now just three provinces out here in Siberia. Sad times. The religious map mode is a little bit of a mess, but uh, pretty interesting nonetheless. Slavic had a bit of a renaissance here, pushing the Norse out of the Northlands. And Lotharingia, despite taking over most of the lands over here in Western Europe, did not convert much of it, and there is a lot of Catholics still living over here. And as for Sicily and the Seljuks, it seems that the Dimi allowed them to basically coexist with their heretics and heathens, and they didn't convert basically anything. <laughs> But how about that Nestorian China as well as Manchuria? I think that is beautiful. Nice map color as well. Um, okay, I don't know how this happened. Japan is Sunni. Okay. And it seems that Bamanis Dakan Hindustan converted most of Southeast Asia while leaving India all Hindu. Australia does exist and it is indeed an Andalusian colony. South America is very heavily Anglican and Protestant with a bit of Sunni up there in the north. And North America is very Sunni with Protestants in the central parts and Catholics on the coasts and in Canada. And then somehow this uh, Alaska colony is um, Shinto. So 
yeah, maybe they traded with Japan. I don't know. Cultures in this mod are quite different than they are in vanilla. You can see this stuff over here, English included, is considered Western Germanic, with East Germanic being Germany. Obviously, the Slavs are very strong in this timeline, but you just can't escape Mexican America as well as American Canada. South America is mostly French as well as a bit of this West Germanic and a bit of the Iberian cultures. Sad times, there is one Finnish culture left in the world. How about this Tunisian culture, Rumie, which is just the uh, Sicilian version of Roman. I didn't know this, but actually Sicily is indeed Tunisian. Now I do know that there's history of uh, Sicily being Shia and it being under a certain dynasty. And I can't remember what it is. I want to say it's like Hasafid or Hafasid or something like that. Let me know in the comments below if you guys know it. But in the end, Lotharingi coming out in number one because of that colonial game being so strong for them, followed by a very powerful Sicily. Hindus stand below them and then the Seljuks actually in the fourth spot. Though I have a feeling that the Seljuks pound for pound are probably the strongest nation in the game. Wendia, followed by Yuan, then Mexico, a former colony, doing quite well in their own right, followed by Kiowa in the eighth spot. Economic Hegemon is a 79.5% stacked up Lotharingia, and Hindustan has 51% towards maxing out the naval hegemony. If you guys enjoyed that one and you want to see more modded content like this, make sure you let me know in the comments below and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. There's plenty more content to come, so subscribe because you are going to miss out on a lot of stuff if you are not subscribed. If you want early access to these videos, my patrons had early access to this video like a week ago. And if you want it, you can get it for as little as $5 a month on my Patreon. If you want to join my Discord, my subreddit, my Twitter, all those things are linked in the description below the video. And that is all I've got for you for today. So until next time, stay chill.